Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of This Week in EDM. We're going over songs that came out, well, This Week in EDM. We've got 29 of them, and I would say a pretty light week, all things considered. Not a ton of tracks I really enjoyed, other than uh, something big came out this week. I can't remember what it is, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. But as always, there's a Spotify link down below for all the songs and easy access, and let's hop into it with the trash category, songs I thought are just trash. A reminder, this is just my opinions. Don't take them as gospel truth, uh, just my opinion. We've got Timmy Trumpet and Gravedigger with drum roll please um techno hard style with a hint of little texas up tempo the song is a mess the mixing is flat the synth line um just sounds like extra tone and there isn't even a real drum roll anywhere i don't get the song at all but we're moving into the bad category songs that i thought were uh, just bad uh we've got dub vision with home from the new another world album out now by dub vision and uh yeah this is just the most generic commercial house song of the year it's trying way too hard to be avici and you can really tell the mixing on this track is generally horrendous so yeah then we've got Midnight Cult with Get Wild. Uh, really underwhelming track, honestly. The melody was uh, pretty boring and the kicks felt flat and the synths were kind of just um, also just, yeah, not, I don't know, mixed that well in one way or another, but um, it's kind of just a bass house track where everything just feels a little like off and just lack that kind of extra layer of polish, I think, across the whole thing. So it didn't really vibe with this one a ton. We've got Sullivan King and Vastiv with Slaughter. Another very intense collaboration from these two to the point where the intensity is really the only real defining feature of the track. Uh, the drops are kind of generic, heavy, abrasive dubstep. And everything about everything else about the song is kind of just meant to set up those abrasive dubstep drops. And so, um, I'm in this, yeah, I don't know. Not really loving it. Not vibing with this one as well. Uh, as we move into Seven Lions and Dabin featuring Jim with Ones I Used to Love. Oh my goodness, this is... The, just the most generic melodic dubstep there maybe possibly has ever been up to this point in 2024. Um, it's just a boring track stylistically. There's nothing new about this at all. Um, also, Jim's vocals are pretty weak, honestly, lacking that kind of oomph that really helps these melodic dubstep tracks. Um, really disappointed from Seven Lines and Davin on this one, I think. Um, I, I know these two don't have to be this generic. It is, it is generic. I'll tell you that. And we've got Lil Texas with To The Rhythm. Uh, yeah, this is Need for Speed, uh, from the new Need for Speed LP, I should say, the third LP from uh, Lil Texas. And this is a kind of firm, up-tempo track that is what you would expect from a little Texas track, honestly. Yeah, it's far from his worst, um, but I, it's just a pain to listen to, honestly. Um, the off-drop sections, are, I would say, are actually pretty cool, and I enjoyed the vibe of them, but um, the heavily, the heavy distortion and beyond fast tempo is just not my, my cup of tea at all, so... That is that. As we move into the meh category songs, I thought were just meh. And we've got Tiesto and Alana Springsteen with Hot Honey, a slap house pop country fusion that just isn't really bad by any means, but just, again, incredibly boring. Um, the lyrics are generic and the beat even more so, but um, I just know this is going to be a hit of a song. It just is, is going to be so. Then we've got Aura with Solar. Uh, this is a sporadic festival trap song with a more kind of standard first half of the drop and then morphs into this kind of not quite halftime, not quite like off-kiltered second half of each of these drops. Um, it's structurally quite odd, I would say, this track. And sonically, the kind of more um, like synth heavy melody kind of lacks that real mm, punch to it. So I don't know, just thought it was meh. They've got Bobby Blacked Out and uh, Heckler featuring Rick Ross with Steppin. Kind of feel like Bobby and Heckler here kind of wasted a Rick Ross collaboration, I must say, um, with a kind of generic rhythm beat. Uh, and on top of that, Rick's vocals don't really feel like they're a part of the track. They're quite distant and uh, like far away in the mix. And it feels like this is kind of a an instrumental of a song that kind of just slapped Rick Ross on top of it without any real cohesion between the two. So didn't love it a ton. Then we got Sophie featuring Popstar with One More Time. The third single from Sophie's uh, sophomore and posthumous album uh, is a real test of patience, I will say. It's not until the two and a half minute mark that we get something other than just dark ambiance. Uh, and even then, it's a pretty simple piano melody with a min minimalistic ambient trance finale. Um, definitely a unique song for sure. Uh, I don't think one will be a highlight of the upcoming record. I don't think so at all, but... Then we got Nick, Nikki Romero, Own Boss, and Oaks with Love You for the Summer. A simple kind of dance pop tech house track with nothing much going for it other than the kind of radio bait that it is. Um, it's a pretty linear track with simple progression, and it's, again, not really bad, just uh, kind of bland. 
Yeah, Pixel Terror and Arthur's with Novocaine. Uh, yeah, this is a heavy dubstep with some screamo and metal elements, but also kind of callback to the sp pre-split Pixel Terror era with these kind of sporadic switch-ups and punchy hits. Um, I do think, though, the metal elements kind of de detracted from the song, I would say, a little bit more sadly here. So, uh, yeah, in terms of this kind of sound from Pixel Terror, I think the pre-split stuff is better up to this point. So that's my opinion. Uh, and then we got Subtronics and Wooly with Hallelujah, a solid collaboration where you really hear each artist's tonal elements, but otherwise it kind of is what I expected. It's kind of a more simple snare kick dubstep song with a grimy melody. It's fine, but nothing I really see myself returning to a whole bunch. They got Calvin Harris and Ellie Golding with Free. Uh, they're trying to replicate the success that they had with Miracle and another Ellie Golding kind of 90s throwback track here, but uh, this one just doesn't really land the same way that Miracle did. The mixing isn't the greatest here, and the melody just isn't that kind of instant earworm that uh, Miracle was. So, yeah, not bad, but also not the greatest. They got Friction and Ion Mode or Aeon Mode uh, featuring Lauren LeMate with uh, State of Mind. Uh, Aeon Mode is also blank if you didn't know that. Um, yeah, this is a strong dance floor drum and bass tune, but nothing above and beyond the kind of standard track, um, both in its kind of lyrics, production, and structure. Kind of just is a more linear track that, again, sounds good, but kind of just linear. So. Then we got Jaws with Higher For Your Love. Uh, liquid drum and bass this time from Jaws, and it's other fine track. Uh, nothing super exploratory in sound design or style, but uh, I would say it's well mixed and put together. It's just, uh, yeah, again, nothing crazy really out there. I feel like this week was a little uh, that that in a nutshell, I would say. We got Dea and Akos with Sulfur. Uh, man, I will give this track some credit uh, for out-of-the-box production here, but my goodness, this is ear-piercing. Um, with a completely absent bass line and sharp synth melody, this track is without a doubt the kind of brightest, sharpest rhythm track I've heard to date. Um, I'm sure there are some diehards that will actually adore this, but to me, it's a little too extreme. They got Henry Fong and Chill with 6-4 Impala, a driven speedhouse track that is short in length and high in energy. It's a nice track to place within a larger mix or project, but it doesn't really do a whole ton by itself. I do think the track has some kind of style and flair to it. They don't hear a ton with um, speedhouse, but um, yeah, I just wish it was kind of expended upon a little bit more. Then we got Brooks with Monster, a pretty by the books uh, feature house track here. It feels a touch dated, uh, but overall, I think a very serviceable tune that will hit a niche -er kind of uh, future house demographic for sure. Uh, one that I would have really, really enjoyed like six, seven years ago. So, but for now, I just think it's a meh. We got Control Freak and Beast Boy with Street Talk. I think the song had some more potential on paper than it ended up being in execution. I do think the kind of screeching sound design was unique sound and tone for this track, but it didn't really do a whole ton with it, I must say. It was really creative, but it felt like it just uh, didn't go the extra mile. Uh, the low end felt pretty absent, and the drops were way too quick for a 2 minute 40 second song. It sort of just kind of comes and goes without really being able to do much for any length of time, so I just thought it was okay. Then we're moving into the good category songs I thought were pretty solid. Uh, we've got Dusty Cloud with Control. Uh, Dusty Cloud continuing to chase that techno wave, and I think it's working, I would say, moderately well for him at this point. Um, it's very much still that kind of dark, minimalistic techno, but the mixing is great, and I think the song has, um, it really shines in its longer mid-sections, I think, more so than anything, so... Then we got Darby and Odoro, I want to say, with Party, a groovin' hybrid trap cut with hints of kind of bouncy future bass here and there, a brilliant song for any club mix, and yes, it's really short, and I don't love that about it, but it offers a lot for, I feel like, just 130 seconds of a track, so... Then we got Papa Khan with Self Destruct. Papa Khan uh, with some of his classic glassy dubstep that uh, works really well here, I think, in the greater context of his discography. Uh, I'm a big fan of the longer runtime ex and extended movements, and I think this is some of his uh, kind of, I would say, better production as of late. Um, it's creative, it's a little wacky, and, and quite enjoyable. Then we got Babby featuring Folo, Igloo Ghost, and Warp Star with Scarface. A really interesting and creative electronic cut with elements of art pop, UK bass and garage. Um, it's kind of all over the place stylistically, and I think it works quite well. Um, it's another quick track, but one that sounds really, really strong. It's one of the few songs where the kind of shorter runtime, I think, helps it uh, because it's so out there sonically that you kind of need that reprieve in between multiple listens. So uh, it's a fun one, though, for sure.
Then we've got Disclosure. She's Gone Dance on the Todd Edwards remix. Uh, Todd took the standout of an original track, added some more vocal samples, a more active melody, and a bouncier bass line, and uh, that that was pretty much it. Uh, it. In the grand scheme of things, it's a fairly similar track to the original, but that's sort of the MO of Todd Edwards remixes, kind of taking the original and not doing a whole ton differently, but making it a little bit more club-friendly, I would say, uh, when the song already is. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed the track. Then we got Eddie with Check This from the, uh, onks, uh, I don't know how to say it exactly, but the <laughs> Onziker Craft Volume 1.5 uh, EP. Hey, this is a stylistically diverse track with elements of mid-tempo, dubstep, hardstyle, and techno even. Um, but in kind of classic Eddie faction, the whole thing is layered with this um, distortion and backed by a constant kind of snare kick combo that worked uh, quite well. And I enjoyed it quite a bit. I'm excited to hop into that EP more so later. Speaking of EPs, we've got Dactyl with the new Wave EP. This song in particular I wanted to highlight is Dactyl featuring Lizzie Land and San Holo with Black Water. A classic kind of uh, melding of peaceful instrumentation and bright, happy synth runs as we normally come to know and love from Dactyl at this point. Uh, it's a beautiful track, and I think Lizzie Land's vocals are magnificent as always. Uh, great one there. Great EP as well. And our penultimate track of the week is Porter Robinson with Perfect Pinterest Garden from the new Smile LP, Porter Robinson's third record. It was a big one. I already did a reaction video on it. I already did a live stream for it. There will be a review at some point, so I don't want to spoil too much of my thoughts on the album. But for now, this track in particular, Perfect Pinterest Garden, um, yeah, I, I think it's great. I think this sounds a lot like um, the 1975. Personally, it feels like a cover kind of track of a 1975-style song. Um, it's very indie, like very much specifically more indie. I wouldn't even really call this electronic music for the most part um but yeah i love the simple guitar riffs and dense bass line it's really tough it's a relatively simple tune for porter and this whole record i think holistically uh and it's also one of the catchiest i think so i really enjoyed it and finally we have got a song in standout uh one final song in standout this week and it is chime and skybreak with pyroclastic uh one of my favorite tracks of this year off of first listen no doubt about it um chime and skybreak do so much with this track while keeping the whole track very streamlined and focused um as the art implies it's kind of got this sound design that makes you feel like you're in a volcano level in like a mario game of sorts whether it's mario kart like rumble volcano or something from the like regular 2d mario games um yeah just with a spattering of like subtle video game references all throughout the track as well just a very enjoyable tune i think it's great i think i'm actually really happy that it's not this very kind of more uh standard color based song from these two and uh one that i thought was a quite standout track so but that's been this week in edm let me know what you think of any and all songs in the comment section below but other than that i'm dakota from Bro Time media and i'll see you guys in another video